back my back. I pulled my back working on the yard today. Video's out if you want to check that out. The bug out bag. You guys seen the title. You know what the deal is. We're going to talk about it because I've been asked about it a ton. Given the current situation, I thought it would be, you know, better to just make awareness of it. It does exist. It's a thing you should probably put together or start putting together. So before we get started on the video, there's a couple things I want to go over first. One, this is for me in my particular situation. I don't have kids. I live by myself. I have a dog. So the way I have my bag packed, I also live in a city. So the way I have my bag packed is probably way different than maybe you have it if you live somewhere where there's, you know, it's not the city, maybe you live in the country, or maybe you do live in a city. Don't think that this is every single thing that you should probably have. It's your situation going to be different. It's just a good basis to get started on and give you a good idea. Uh, number two, the number two, I forget. There's three or four things I like to base the start of it off of. One is always going to be water. Without water, you're you're dead in the water, really. <laughs> You're dead. I was trying to make a joke. Not funny. Anyway, um, so you need water. So that's the most important thing. Air, especially in this situation where there's a, a disease going around. You got to be able to breathe and you got to be able to, you know, protect yourself. So, and then there's obviously food. And for me, there's tools. Okay. There, those are the four main things you got to base this bag off of. And that's just my personal opinion. You can argue with me, you can do whatever you wanna do, that's just how I think about it. Uh, food, I don't feel like is, is too important because this is, a, this is a bug out bag, which means three days. This is not a live in the woods for three months bag, you know what I'm saying? If I have to do that, then hell, you know, maybe I, I might need to pack up a, a bigger bag and that's a different video for a different time, but this is basically a 72 hour kind of deal. Also, this doesn't have to be just for, holy crap, there's a pandemic or there's this crazy shit hits the fan situation. This could be for like a hurricane that comes, like something like Katrina or something like that happened in Dallas with these floods and people had to leave their houses for, you know, months at a time. So those are bug out situations. So keep that in mind. It doesn't always have to be some, you know, crazy terroristic event or pandemic or anything like that. So uh, try to base it on realistic things and go from there. So anyway, without further ado, let's uh, jump into it. There's a lot to cover in this, uh, so I'm just going to start with tools first because there's a, that's the one thing I usually always forget, and then we'll go into the bag. So One of the more important things also to remember is you want to keep yourself discreet and like a gray man, so you don't really want to walk around with watches like this or fancy watches. A few watches that I would recommend that you get for, you know, just to have is maybe just something like a G-Shock, real simple, maybe an atomic solar G-Shock, or even like this cheap Casio, this is a freaking calculator watch, like seriously, it's a calculator. So that will keep the whoever off of your, you know, people are gonna not look at you, you know what I mean? Like you don't wanna be, you wanna be very discreet gray man type of deal. So tools are very important in the city. When you live in a city, you're gonna need tools, and I see a lot of different bags where guys just don't have tools and they think that they're gonna get around things. And you just, there's a couple of tools that I like to have that are just obvious things. So the first thing is this, this kit here. This is gonna go on the outside of the bag. So I don't have it on there now, but this is the tool kit that it's always in my EDC bag. And also having a well-rounded EDC to begin with, which this isn't an EDC video, but I'll leave a link in the description and at the end of the video and maybe up on the screen somewhere so you guys can check that out. But we're not going to talk about EDC because you guys see my videos a ton about that. But toolkit, this is, uh, so this thing here, this is really cool. This is a Nipex little toolkit and inside here, uh, it's debatable whether you're going to need the, the wire cutters or not. But definitely these mini uh, channel locks and these mini uh, like adjustable wrench deal that lock. And these Nipex tools are just unbeatable. You can't, there's nothing better than them. And then a pair of wire cutters, not, not too bad. I mean, you may not need these because on the side of the bag, and I'll just show you real quick. 
and I'll have these quick access to these. These are always going to be on the outside of this bag. These are bolt cutters and just fence cutter and whatever. And these are also by Night Pex. And in an escape and evade situation, you're going to need these. You're going to need to cut through fence. You're going to need to cut through wire. You might need to cut through barbed wire and climb a fence and do different stuff like that. So keep in mind that tools are something that I see a lot of guys forget in their bug out bags, and especially when they live in a city. Like I said, if you, if, if you don't live in a city and you live in the country or whatever, these kind of things probably aren't necessary. But for me, a good solid tool kit with just a few things, not a big deal. Also, an adjustable wrench, but I would probably get rid of that given the fact that I have this in here. So, don't really need two of them. Uh, so, that's just always in here. Other than that, there's a, a multi-tool in here. So, in case I'm in a situation where I don't have my main multi-tool kit on me, which this is a Leatherman. This is also a Leatherman too. I have a Leatherman Surge in the truck. But anyway, other than that, here's a little boo-boo kit in here. This is not a trauma kit. This is just band-aids and neosporin and earplugs and tape. Just real basic little boo-boo kit. Stuff that you would actually probably need. You know, it's just, you don't want, you cut your eye or something, you have blood dripping down your eye, you're going to need a little band-aid. You know what I mean? Uh, knife sharpener. There's a pry tool. Another important aspect of uh, escape and evade situation. You never know what you're going to need to pry. This is just a mini one, but it definitely gets the job done. Like I said, uh, that is your multi-tool. I have lock picks, so you know these are different locks you might need to access. But honestly, if anything's locked, I'm just cracking it open with this thing. So there's that. Uh, this is just a couple of razor blades. They're just for my EDC stuff, but a lot of this stuff I might dump to make it lighter. A knife sharpener, I would dump that because I wouldn't even use it. I have a better one. Uh, but it just stays in there because this is my EDC kit. Uh, and then here, this is a, just a lighter with g a good amount of Gorilla Tape wrapped around it. You're always going to need tape, so I keep that wrapped around there. Kill two birds at one stone kind of deal. And in here, there's some extra batteries for my flashlights. Over here, nothing. Inside here is something real important, especially in the city. This is called a sill lock key. And what this is going to do is open all the water valves on industrial buildings. So, you know, if you need to get access to water, then here you go, right here. This is how you do it. There are a lot of buildings, industrial buildings, aren't going to have that, you know, little knob. So they're going to have a key lock system. So a key, a uh, sill lock key, really good to have. Here is an extra AAA battery for just a basic flashlight that I would keep on me. Uh, the reason why I would keep a basic AAA light is because in an escape and evade situation, I don't want an expensive light like something like this. Of course, I would have this on me, but the problem is with this, if the battery dies and it's no good anymore, you're not going to find this battery in, in very easily. You know, So you might get lucky, but in every remote control in house in America, you're probably going to find AAA batteries. So... A good AAA light, a definite 100%. And a couple batteries there, and I would probably throw a couple more in. So that's pretty much for tools. Uh, other than that, for tools, you would include yourself a good knife. Now, this is the William Collins Survival Knife. This is my main knife that I would use in a survival situation, in escape and evade. It's, uh, it, you know, you really don't want to fight somebody that has this. I mean, this thing will do anything. It'll go through concrete, drywall, car doors, whatever. You know what I mean? If you need to sleep in a car, you need to cut the lock open. You don't want to break the window. It's cold, whatever. You can cut straight through sheet metal with this thing, access the lock, open the door, spend a night in a car, not freeze your ass off, and go into hypothermia and die, because you die. Inside here for tools, we'll start going into the bag. Another, a big pair of channel locks like this. So these are another Nipex. See the uh, trend here? Nipex is the best, these channel locks. And in a city, you know, you, you might need these. Now, once I get out of the city and I'm in the woods, I might be able to dump some of these and hide them somewhere in a location to where I know where they're at. So if I have to get back, and you know, I'll, I'll have them. But, you know, it would depend because this is a fair amount of weight right here. So, you know, but those are uh, some basic tools you would need uh, and an escape and evade situation. 
It's probably debatable whether I would need these giant channel locks and these little mini ones. Having a good pair of channel locks is definitely not going to kill you, but these are definite. 100% you need a pair of uh, fence cutter, bolt cutters, something like that. So, Also in here, we have a good saw. This is the Ichiban Samurai. Uh, you pop, if you watch that yard video, you see me cutting some roots with this thing. This is just a really nice saw and it'll get the job done for sure. Whatever you need to cut, maybe need, you know, make some tinder for firewood. Got to have a good saw. That's pretty much it for that side over here on this side. Oh, and by the way, this is a 511 Rush. I forget what number this is, but it's not the big 72. Might be. Actually, I don't remember. I'll leave it in the link if I can figure it out. Over on this side, we got some rope. So here is survival cord. Now, what's cool about this stuff, guys, so this is not your basic, ordinary cord. Inside here, you have a bunch of different thread. All right, but then you also have fishing string. I mean, that's going to come in handy if, to catch fish. Then you got some uh, fire tinder. You can pull that apart and have a good little tinder, uh, a, a, a snare wire, so you can set snare traps, um, and then you got your different uh, types of cordage here, I'm not sure what this one is, it's just a really strong one, thread, but you can, uh, you know, really good, this is called the survival cord, you get this on Canadian Preppers website, it's the best paracord in existence in my opinion, so this is a must in the bag, other than that, this is for... Uh, storm this is a good pair nice pair of rope good pair lots of rope in here uh, and this is just for storm just in case her leash breaks or you know this is also back up for my sleeping system which we'll get to in the clamshell part of the bag but you're gonna need rope that's pretty much it for that uh, we'll go into this front part here this little front pouch And opening this up, I have a couple chem lights. This is definitely uh, important. You're going to need something like this. This is the Eton Scorpion 2. It's a crank radio. It's solar powered. And it is, in my opinion, probably one of the best handheld crank radios they make on the market. It's, an, it's a good price. I think it's like 30 bucks, maybe cheaper. It's got a light on it. So you always have flashlights dead right now. It's been in this bag for a while. But... You can hang it on the outside of the bag, solar charge it, whatever, where you can crank it for, you know, if you're bored, because you're going to be bored probably when you're camped out or whatever. So, see, just cranking it like that a few times, it's already got that light on. So it's cool to have something that's always going to have a light, no matter what. And radio, you're going to need to be able to hear what's going on uh, with the government, you know, in your city, whatever the situation is. Really good tool. Uh, this is a write and array notepad. Maybe you need to write notes. And the reason why I have a write in the rain is for the obviously writing in the rain. And this is the Fisher Space bullet pen. It's also got a write in the rain pen. In case you don't know what these do, you can. Oh, man, I'm getting. My back is killing me. I'm gonna drip some water on there like that. And. It'll still work. So, right in the rain. Really good to have. And we just got a Sharpie marker. Now back in this part, I have my maps. Um, this is a Pennsylvania State map and Philadelphia map. I need to get these laminated or get laminated ones, but I haven't had a chance. Um, I'm not going to open these up because they have my locations and my um, the way I would go to evade out of the city on here. I'll give you one hint though, use the railroad. Uh, these are <laughs> these are um, thyroid tablets for nuclear. It's debatable whether you would need these, but if there's nuclear or something going on, you take one of them and that will protect you from radiation poisoning in your thyroid, which your thyroid gland is what gives you radiation poisoning. And I believe I have the card too to check the radiation levels as well so pretty neat I know a lot about this nuclear stuff because uh, 
I got this book here that I've read. I've read this thing a few times, actually. Oh, and this is the Armed Forces of Nuclear Biological. A pretty good book. I don't know. Interesting stuff in there. <clears throat> so I read that a few times, so I got a little freaked out and was like, I need freaking nuclear tablets. <laughs> Anyways, uh, in the back part here is part of my sleep system, not the main thing of it. This is more like an emergency deal. But this is the big utility blanket, and you could also use this for shelter. But it's it's a nice big sized uh, you know thermal blanket. So pretty cool. You can use this a bunch of different things you can do with this. Uh, shows you on the back. You can you know collect firewood, keep the ground dry, you can collect water with this thing, put it on the ground so you're not freezing. Make shelter with it. I mean, there's just a bunch of different uses for this thing. So really really cool and this is not the cheap little small things you get at Walmart this is a good size so these top little guys up here I have my Sun 2 compass if you don't know how to read a compass maybe I'll do a video on that one day but uh, Sun 2 makes the best compasses in my opinion and probably many others I don't really think there's any argument there but yeah so a good compass definitely need one of those it's pretty much it for this front pouch up here on this in this side I have a headlamp AAA battery cheap energizer one and then I also have one of my main one of my water source purifiers a source to purify water and these are just the tablets aqua tablets so you can purify water with those I have a bunch of different ways to purify water in here uh, one of them is also oh, here it is the grail and I would be carrying this probably strap it to the bag or get it in there somehow I might need to get a bigger bag to be honest with you guys but you basically take this off scoop some water in there press it in it goes through the filter and you have fresh drinking water so this thing's really cool so this thing here this is the survival filter this thing's pretty cool uh, it doesn't fit on these water bottles here but on the smart water bottles and Dasani, it'll screw right onto that, which is really neat. So you can just scoop the bottle of water, screw this on there, and have a, a straw. It's 0.8 microns, and it'll filter out most uh, contaminants in the water. So another way to, to have fresh water, which is really important. Can't stress that enough. So before I go into the rest of the bag, though, breathing. Like I said, air is really important, especially in this situation. This is a respirator that I use. But I also have it with a pair of safety glasses because a lot I see a lot of people wearing masks and you, and I do it including me and they're not wearing safety glasses and it's kind of pointless uh, if you're not protecting your eyes because it can still you mu you mucus it's a, it goes in your mucus so it can get in your eyes this disease and uh, most diseases are like that so protect your eyes so a good pair of safety glasses a respirator and of course like I said a well-rounded EDC is also important. And in my EDC, I have my two N95 masks. And there's also two more in here. Now we can get into the main compartment. Now this bag has compression straps, so it'll come tight. It weighs about 34 pounds. I have walked 10 miles with this, so 20 actually, 10 up, 10 back. And uh, it's, it's a lot of work, believe me. So if you have a bag like this, make sure you train with it. And also, make sure you train with hiking when you're doing that with your rifle if you're going to carry one. So this is an ARA3. It's debatable in a bug out situation whether or not you would need this, you know, and carry extra mags and the whole deal. But, <clears throat> you know, it's just one of those things that you would have to make that decision. For me, it, it, it would have to really be a bad situation for me to bug out uh, and need this. But I probably, I mean, I definitely would keep it in my truck. Uh, but it would be tough to walk around the city with an AR-15 and not be noticed. So you would have to travel very discreetly and be very good. And uh, maybe we could do some videos and I could show you guys how to do that. But we won't be able to take this out with us. So you'll just have to imagine that I have this with me. But, you know, so yeah, an AR-15 for bug out, definitely part of it. Um, you know, at the very least, if it's a situation where there's a lot of guards and army around... You know, just carry a simple handgun is better than nothing, right? And this is a Glock 43, so 
Uh, but for me, I would probably keep this in my truck and drive until you can no longer drive. And then from there, we would, you know, get out and hike. And that's pretty much how I would do it. So popping the top part of it, here's where you have two more N95 masks. All right, and these are fresh, brand new, in a Ziploc bag, keep them nice and fresh. And they always stay in here, they never leave. There is a water bladder and stuff back here, but uh, I don't use it. So now this pop open the clamshell design here. Oh, that's the side. I'm gonna pop this bad boy just completely open, lay it on the table. So, first things first, uh, like I said, you would need uh, water, air, and fire. It, it's very important. So, my fire kit here, uh, you could, this is a little Max Expedition pouch. And in here, you're gonna have a ferrocium rod, a lighter, uh, cotton balls mixed in Vaseline, a little bit of tin foil just in case the ground's wet, you need to light a fire on wet ground. Uh, these are the British lifeboat matches. Really, really cool. These are well, these things are light and, and underwater and everything. So, uh, magnesium rod and just different ways to light fire, like paper, just you know, wax paper. So stuff burns pretty good. Just a bunch of different ways. This is also a, a whistle in here. I, I don't really know why I have that in there, but anyway. Um, also, this is more like my camping bag too. If I go camping, this is the bag I take. So a lot of this stuff I'll use when I go camping or whatever, and I won't use a lighter to light my fire. I'll go ahead and, and strike like with the ferrocium rod, just to get good practice in and learn how to do it, and it's just a little bit more fun too. So when I go hike, camping and hiking, I also use all this stuff. So it's not like it just sits around, I never use it. We do use it. Uh, in the top of this, I have um, Band-Aids, real quick access to them, just so, you know, like I said, you cut your finger, you're bleeding all over, whatever, you know, Band-Aids. Uh, these are RMEs. These are from, um, like 4,000 calorie bars. I think they're like 400 a bar. But these are on all the ships, U.S. Army ships and all that stuff, or Navy. So these are pretty good actually too, not bad. I think these are the fruit cup ones or whatever the heck they are, but that's what those are. And they're heavy too, they got some density. And they'll give you some good calories. I'm not gonna see a lot of food in here uh, because I just haven't packed out for it. Um, but I would probably keep like maybe two freeze dried bags in here. I just don't have them right now. Uh, my So my sleep system is, here's part of it. This is uh, the jungle. Blanket XL. It's a snug pack and this thing will keep you warm. It's debatable whether I would need this if it's summertime or not. It is getting warmer so I might ditch this to lose some weight. But uh, I do use this for hiking and camping so it's in there and this thing is awesome. I'm not going to take any of this stuff out because it's a pain in the ass to get back in there. Uh, but yeah, this is the snug pack Jungle Blanket XL and this thing is awesome. And it's like so when I go camping, I use the bed of my truck too, and we lay and like look at the stars and just hang out by a fire. Uh, we'll do some videos on that when the time comes, but this is what I put down uh, on the on the bed of the truck. So really cool. And then over top, uh, this is part of my sleep system as well. This is a really nice tarp, okay. And this is from Red Clamp or Red Red Camp. Sorry. Uh, and it's a really nice tarp. It has stakes with it. I'm not going to pull it all out of here, but it's a ripstop nylon, 100% waterproof tarp, and it's it's a really good one. It packs nice. It's light. It's got some stakes in there and some different uh, tools right here. So, you know, I, that's my part of my sleep system as well for shelter. I would just put the tarp, and then my bed is right here. This is a Black Scout Survival Hammock. And we haven't done a review on this, but we're going to do it in the backyard as soon as I'm finished with the backyard. Because we're going to put this back out there and do a lot of reviews on this kind of stuff when the backyard's finished. So you guys will keep an eye out for that this summer because we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. Everything in this bag, pretty much, we're going to review. So 
This is the Black Scout Survival Hammock, badass hammock, and that's my sleep system. And also, like, keep in mind, this is all the stuff I would take out on a hiking and camping trip, which I do a lot in the summer. So, this here is a field and stream waterproof bag, and I don't want to pull everything out of here. Maybe we'll just pull the top, because it's all I can show you guys. But basically what's in here is, uh, alright, we'll just pull it out. We got a schmog. I'd probably put this on right away anyway uh, in a bug out situation because I'd be able to cover my face, uh, cover, you know, just a lot of different things you can do with this. It's just, you know, I don't really have to explain that to you. Uh, pair of underwear. You don't need to see that. Ugh, a hoodie. All right. And that's just a dry fit hoodie by Nike. Also inside here is a uh, pair of wool socks by... Best darn socks, really good pair of socks. So get a good pair of socks. You're gonna be walking a lot. And a rip pair of ripstop nylon proper pants and a folding raincoat is all in there. And then also I keep in here backup fire tinder in case the bag gets wet and all else fails. I need to keep myself dry and I always will have a way to light fire. There's a good amount of tinder in there. Some British lifeboat matches, regular matches. And that's what I keep inside this field and stream waterproof bag. And this is in there. And maybe like my phone would go in there. Just stuff like that. So you would have that backup setup in case, you know, everything gets soaked. Maybe you got to walk through a river or something or a very deep pond. Speaking of the socks, good pair of hiking shoes. These are Vasquez. Um been recommended these by all my army friends and army ranger friends that I have and guys that were in uh, marine raiders they all wear this these when uh, when they go overseas and different contractor work so these are the Vasque 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 I don't know they they haven't worn them yet but uh, warm around the house just haven't worn them on a hike but we're gonna change that soon and do a review on them but these things look really nice and I have heard nothing bad about them from every single person I talk to about them so get a good pair of hiking shoes because you're going to be walking a lot <sighs> so the bottom here is this little zipper pouch is my cook set one of the cook sets at least and inside here more fire tinder and british lifeboat matches and i keep that in there and again like i said this is stuff i would take on a camping trip or when I'm going to music festivals, camping, stuff like that, I would take all this stuff with me and use all this. Here's a Storm's dry towel. This is for Storm. And then also I have in here a little water kit, and that's for the dog, some dog stuff. And then we have, and we'll get into what I would do with Storm. She has her own bug out kit as well. But here's another way to, to boil water. This is a folding bowl. This is called the Bear Bowl. And don't even know if they're available anymore. Haven't heard nothing about it. I got this on a Kickstarter program. But it just basically folds up into a bowl. If I can figure it out. <laughs> oh, you know what? It goes like this. I do have a video on this, if you guys can find it. And you can hang it over your fire, cook soup in it. You know, boil water, this thing is awesome. And it folds flat in your bag, so that's why I really like this. And then here's my stove. And this is a folding stove. And this thing's really cool. As you can see, I've used it a bunch of times. Haven't done a review on it, but it basically, put it together, it takes just a couple seconds to throw this thing together. All right, so there's the Emberlit stove. Um, you can put your firewood in there, your tinder, make a little firewood, and this thing works really good. We'll do a review on this, but this thing is awesome. And it's got a little top, so you can put a bowl of soup on there, or you can put a can on there, boil water, do whatever you gotta do. I use this thing a lot. I haven't done a review on it yet, but this thing is really cool. And again, this is the Emberlit stove, and that's my cook setup. And, you know, you're going to need to cook food. 
So that's pretty much it for the bag. Uh, as you can see, um, water, fire, air, and then tools. So for Storm, this is her kit. This would go on her. Uh, it has an attachable pouches for food and for her own um, medical, like this thing would go on there and her own water bowl and food dish. An extra three day supply of food to get where we're going. And this is Storm's little bug out kit. And this is, she would carry her own weight. I'm not gonna carry all her stuff. So this goes on her, this is pretty cool. This is from One Tigris. We'll do a review on that another time too when it gets a little nicer out. So there's that. It's terrible making these videos and then having to put all this stuff back. But anyway, uh, here's the trauma kit. Um, this is in my truck at all times, but this would definitely come with me. This is a little VanQuest um, trauma pack. It's in red. Uh, I would po I'm probably going to get a bigger bag eventually, guys, so keep out in a video when I upgrade this thing. Uh, and this thing would be strapped to the side, worst case scenario, quick access to it. It's got a tourniquet inside here. It's got everything you would need as far as wound packing, trauma, clotting, a nasal passage. I mean, I don't want to dump this thing all out, but we'll, we'll do a video on this thing. But it's got a Gen 7 cat tourniquet on the side, which is my go-to tourniquet that I would... I feel most comfortable using. It's what I was trained to use, and uh, yeah, I feel really comfortable using the Gen 7 cat tourniquet. It's very, very easy to use, and it's nice and wide, so you don't have to worry about you know, oh my God, they're gonna lose a limb. Don't use a tourniquet if you don't know what you're doing. That's actually very old technology, so got a timestamp on there and everything. You have eight hours, so there is a really good trauma kit. Definitely gonna need that, and then few extra things you know maybe I'll shove these in my pockets another tourniquet here uh, this is the Sam I never used this one haven't even tried it yet but we'll do a video on that eventually and these are high fin chest heels you guys always seen this one this is actually another good tourniquet and one of my favorites as well and I like this one because it's so small and and just uh, it's compact and it's light and it's really really easy to use and it's got a new windlass on it this is the gen 4 soft tourniquet and it's really nice. It doesn't come with this little deal here, this uh, little clip thing. So you could clip this thing to your plate carrier or, you know, to your AR-15 uh, stock if you want. You can, you know, clip it to your stock, which may be something I'll do. We'll see when I get the other stock. This is one of my favorites right here. Go, go right on your belt. That's a Maxpedition. I believe you get this from Dark Angel Medical Supply. I forget. I'll try to figure it out and leave the link where I got this little sleeve. But it's, it's really awesome. And that's the soft tee. The old one, this is the Gen 3 soft tee. And again, this is, this is the Gen 4. So a little bit of differences. This is much better than the old one. But it, the old one still works too. You just don't have this crazy locking pin thing. And it locks, locks it down and all that stuff. Uh, but the new design of it, the Gen 4 soft tee, if you can grab one, go ahead and grab one. They're really simple to use. A kid can use these things. They're so easy. So learn how to use a tourniquet. So that's it for my bug out bag, guys. Keep in mind that all this stuff is for my situation. A lot of this stuff, just consider it like kind of like camping gear. The tools are to get out of the city um, safely, quickly, and you know without being seen. So you don't see a bunch of camouflage. Everything that I'm wearing is gray, man, just grays and browns. Just real easy, try, try to be discreet. You don't need to be wearing, you know, <laughs> camo and all this other stuff and plate carriers. I mean, even if you don't spend uh, close to a grand on plate carriers and plates, you're, you're gonna be weighing a ton, especially with this 35 pound pack. So a plate carrier, maybe a front one, cause you're good in the back. You can throw a soft uh, armor in the back of that if you want, all kinds of different options. You can even go light if you don't want to carry all this camping gear and stuff that you think you're going to have to sleep through, you know, because it depends on the situation. Again, don't take this all like, why do you have all this sleeping stuff? I might not need all that, and I might go light and just throw a couple tools, some rope, a fire kit, and um, some water tablets and medical in this, and grab my AR-15, throw a flint plate carrier on a couple magazines, and be out. You know, so it depends on the situation, really. So keep that in mind, guys. This isn't the ultimate kit, but it's a, it's a pretty good start. Not everybody I know has is going to be able to build this in a few weeks. This is something I've been putting together for years, 
And again, it's a lot of this stuff I take camping, like these different bag, uh, blankets and tarps and all that stuff. It's uh, And I do a lot of that stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So think of it like that. Hopefully this video helped you and you found it informative in some way, shape, or form. If not, then I don't know. Don't like it. Doesn't Either way, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, as long as you engage in a video, it doesn't really matter. You can... People think it's funny because they, they say these rude comments and they say things and, you know, it takes you way more time to say something rude than it takes me to block you. And honestly, as long as you engage in the comments, it doesn't matter what you say. Uh, so anyway, thank you all for watching and I love you all. Be safe out there during this crazy times and hopefully, again, you enjoyed this video. I'll give you something to watch. You know, ain't nothing on TV. So watch me on TV. Anyway, guys, I love you all. Have a good one. Peace. Holy crap. Now I got to put all this stuff away. Jesus. Not going to be fun. Not going to be fun. <laughs> Bags everywhere. Freaking gear. My goodness.